It's time to discover under the sea with the fish silhouette. And Jenny's back to show us some great techniques for how to make this fish. How cool. It is so much fun, especially because we're going to be playing with some paints. And one step is going to be painting a background, and the other is going to be spattering and making a little bit of a mess. So make sure you have your apron on and your table covered. OK. And of course, to make it, we're going to need some tempera paints, some watercolor paints, some watercolor paper, um, a frame for when we're all ready, and some little adhesive uh, dimensional embellishments to pop it up, and then an old toothbrush, not your good one. Okay, your that's a good Your old toothbrush and maybe a chopstick and some plates and some paintbrushes. Okay. You ready? Sounds good. Okay, we're gonna start off by doing our painting and our messy work first. All right. So the first thing you wanna do is make the background. And so can I ask you to do that? We're gonna just use two different colors. Sure. And make some pretty waves for the ocean. Yeah, and with the foam brush, you can just use the width of the brush to make the shape of your waves. And just drag it over. I need to get some more paint. More paint. And this is a, a what I call a painterly project, too. So we don't want it to be too perfect or too exact. We want the colors to kind of blend into each other so that it feels really watery and, and ocean-y. Right. OK, so while you're doing that, I'm going to do my spattering. And I'm just going to take one color. I already have some yellow down here, and it's kind of dried. But now I'm going to dip my toothbrush into the red and use the chopstick and spatter some color right on top. And what I want to do is have some areas that are mostly red and then some areas that go over the yellow. So it's, again, kind of layered and fun. Make sure you have your apron on and some paper towels handy. Now, here's the fun part for me. The magic happens when you add a little mister of water. That looks Look great. Look at how the colors blend and, and merge together. So you can really kind of play with your color mixing. Right. You're going to want to let this dry along with your background. And what you're going to end up with, are you ready? This is my favorite part. Oh, you're going to end up with these beautiful painted papers like this. So what we're going to do is go ahead and cut out our template, which you're going to find on the website, and trace it onto some hard cardstock okay. so that you've got a nice pattern. And then you're going to trace that onto a piece of just really kind of throwaway background paper, just like this. Now remember those strips, or the, um, the paper, we're going to cut into strips. And you can use just a uh, ruler, which I would have had here if I could find it. There we go and just trace the width of the ruler itself and then cut those out. Oh yeah, that's an easy way to keep them all even. Or if you like to measure and make different widths, you can do that too. That's again, kind of up to you. So we're gonna cut some of those out. Once you do okay, it, sure. cut a few. And now we're going to go back to our original piece. Let's see, how about we use this one? Oh wait, I'm gonna use this one right here underneath here. Excuse me while I reach. No problem. That's how it is when you craft. That's you make right. little move things around. And now what I'm going to do is glue some of those on top of this tracing. This one. This is that scrap paper I told you about. Right. And you're going to just put them together, but not in the same order. You're going to kind of move them upside and downside and all over the place so that it doesn't look the same as when you cut it up. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. And you can put different colors next to each other too that right. way. Right. And you kind of mix up those tones. Then we're going to go ahead and once it's all done, retrace it like so and cut it out because now you know exactly where that template is. Right. And once you cut it out, you're going to go ahead and use some of your foam dots, use your background and just layer it all up and put it in your frame. You don't need any glass because you want it to kind of stand out from That's the wall. That's right, it's really three dimensional. This looks great. Thank you, and you know, you could also do like jellyfish or starfish, any under the sea that you can find like in a coloring book. That's a good idea. You could even put things in the background in the waves. You could have a whole gallery full. Right, that, that would, would be great. so much fun.